This week on CrossFeed. How would Jesus live? A pastor with a holy rotor? The science of lifelong love. Does abstinence training work or not? And will Jesus be banned from Obama's inauguration? Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, Pastor St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. And I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here in snowy New England, uh, where we just got uh, six or eight inches of snow last night. Yeah, you got that from us. You're welcome. <laughs> I was... well, except, Go ahead. you know what happens is it comes across the country, and then it hits the coast, and it draws all that moisture off the ocean. So, you know, you guys might get three or four, but we'll always get six, eight, or 12. Yeah, I think we got like five. But, yeah, we were supposed to go and um, visit family. I have, like, my my grandpa and uh, great aunts and uncles and stuff like that um, that we were getting together with. And uh, we ended up, everybody made it for, except us because everybody else was uh, coming from north and we were coming from south. And, uh, so we couldn't make it, but we still got to see him, uh, because it was at my mom's place and, uh, she, uh, got my brother to install Skype on her computer and hooked up the, the, the webcam and that. And so, uh, we got to see each other, you know, even though that we were a couple hundred miles away, but yeah, well, we had 32 people in church this morning. Yeah. Uh, what do you usually have? Services. 120. Yeah. I guess we canceled last week, but I was on vacation. Mm-hmm. I think I mentioned that last time. Yeah, well, we had, um, it was funny because somebody's like, we didn't cancel. I'm like, look, if I can make it eight miles from Randolph up there, you can make it three miles from Dedham, okay? <laughs> so, and uh, I had no problem getting up there this morning. Oh, well, where should we begin our stories today? Well, I know. It would have been a lot easier for you to get to church with all that snow if you had a helicopter. I agree. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, if you're going to have a helicopter, uh, go for for an Apache attack copter, you know? Oh, that's beautiful. Our audio people are going, huh? <laughs> so, uh, you know, hey, if you're going to go for, if you're going to get there, get there. You know, don't mess around. All right. This is in uh, in in Michigan, uh, Grand Rapids. The, no, this is in Seattle. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I'm I grabbed the wrong page. My bad. Yeah. We'll go to Grand Rapids later. Um, yeah, we, we've got uh, pastors Casey and Wendy Treat from the uh, Christian Faith Center. And uh, they've got two different campuses, um, for those familiar with Seattle, one on Federal Way and one on Everett, I guess. And they have been approved for a helicopter. So they can get back and forth between the two campuses of the church without having to fight traffic. There are restrictions against frequent or nighttime flights, however. But yes, they have a helicopter pad that uh, they can they can do each year. Um, but the, I saw now I was looking up this, I looked up this church. I mean, they've got like. Yeah, that sounds a little crazy because this is a mega church. I mean, they've got like between two campuses, nine thousand people a week. Yeah. I mean, that's an incredible number of people. Yeah, it is. But boy, you can't drive. I, I, I'm sorry, but I I, I I don't know what they might be facing. I mean, it may be uh, you know. <laughs> One ends at 10, the other starts at 10.15, and they need to get, you know, get there quick. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Reschedule. Yeah. Or, or else, you know, there is two of them. It's a husband and wife team. Have one at each one 
or you know, they said that know. they're only going to use it for major religious holidays or special guest speakers. But you know what? These things cost a fortune, right? Even if you don't have an Apache, <laughs> and <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm sorry, but I just look at that and I go. Yeah, you couldn't, you know, if you got that money to be able to do something like that, you couldn't, you know, give it to the poor or missionaries or, you know, I'm just thinking it could be better spent. I agree with you. I just don't want to make it too much of a decision till unless I was actually there, unless I was one of the guys who actually had to make the decision. Um, one of my problems with a lot of mega churches. Uh, and again, this is where you get thousands of people and, and stuff. Um, it's not a lot of time to kind of rubber stamp whatever the, the, the lead pastor says. Uh, you know, who's ever on the board of directors, they just kind of stamp it and, you know, they don't really get And so if the pastor says, oh, this is really necessary, okay, then it's really necessary. We're not going to argue. See, now I was, I was reading the comments on this article. And I think the comments are really telling because there's a lot of people from that area uh, that are commenting, uh, people that are familiar with the church and stuff like that, and uh, a lot of mention of things like prosperity gospel, you know, hey, God loves me, he wants me to have a helicopter, you know. Um, but, you know, y you look at all of the negative comments uh, that, you know, it, you know, we've talked about um, how our actions – and how the world sees our actions and, and, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, but people look at this and they go, Oh, so this is what the church is about, you know? And, and they just, it's immediately, they just go, what a bunch of hypocrites. Yeah. We're supposed to be helping people out. Oh, but give the pastor a helicopter, you know? Well, again, I mean, but, but you see, they, the next question is, well, do you know how much that they, that, that, that they help people out? Do you know how much what they do? Do you know what their budget is? No, I just know this. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, yes, perceptions are important, but I don't know if we can always deal with that, especially in an area that's extremely secular, like, you know, Seattle area and Tacoma area are. Uh, we are dealing there with a pair area that, you know, is, uh, I heard, uh, 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 he's now a professor at Pacific Lutheran Seminary. Uh, but, uh, he had a call up in that area and he said, yes, and he said, I was very fortunate. Both Christians, both Christians in Seattle live within driving distance of the church. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a very, very secular area, a very, very, you know, uh, this is the area, remember, you know, that, 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 that you know, the atheists had their little, yep. um, sign up there. So, you know, I, I'm always nervous a little bit about whenever I read, um, some of those comments, because how familiar, you know, really are they with that church? You know, uh, in, in Rockford, Illinois, there's a church that's, that, that had 5,000. I mean, you know, they, they, they built the building for 5,000. There's cat a corner to it was another building, another church that, you know, was one or 2,000 a Sunday. I mean, it was, it was nicknamed God's Corner because these two churches were right next to each other. But did, how much did any of us really know about them? Yeah. And then there was a, right next to them, was a very small United Methodist church that probably had about a hundred people in it. <laughs> you know, and, but, uh, which I always thought was kind of, kind of tiff coming in. How do, how do you feel bad having your, you know, your building in, in the shadow of that, that, you know, 5,000 seat monstrosity? But how much, how much any of us really knew about the congregation is another story. People have a lot of comments, but I don't know how many of us actually knew anything about the place. Yeah. I don't know. I still, I, I just can't imagine spending that money on it. I mean, because I'm sure that a church that size does all kinds of outreach and, and uh, you know, helping the poor and all that kind of stuff. I'm not denying that, all right? But, you know, we've been doing these stories about missionaries that can't afford uh, to be out in the field anymore because of the weak dollar and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I'm just looking at this going, a helicopter? <sighs> I agree. I mean, you know, for for that, I, now I don't know if they do this in Seattle or not. I mean, but you know, it would be possible to hire a police escort to get you from one place to the other. Yeah, on those major holidays and stuff. Uh, but uh, I don't know how. I don't know what a helicopter costs either. You know, I mean, you know, if they're going to rent it for a couple hours. I mean, um, you know, I mean, if they buy it, yeah, that's one thing. But if they're, you know, if they're just going if they're going to rent it when they need it for 
whatever. It may be cost effective. I'm not okay. sure. I could see that. All right. If, you know, if it, maybe. Because <laughs> it, cause they said it's only going to be used for major holidays and stuff. So um, then, you know, you, you might be renting it for, for a while. I don't know. But I'd like to know more details. I, I'm with you. I'm a little suspicious, but I'd like to have more details before we've got it figured out. But, uh, well, let's see. Well, we talked about Grand Rapids. Let's head over to Grand Rapids then. And uh, Professor Ed Dobson at, I um, can't remember what university is there in Grand Rapids, um, one of the architects of the religious right, although later on he did write a book with, ah, um, uh, what's his name, the uh, columnist. Oh, yeah, the uh, columnist. Uh, yeah, the, the guy, uh, Cal, Cal... God, all of a sudden I can't remember his last name. Um, it'll come to me later. Um, but he's he's a syndicated Cal Thomas. Okay. Um, and Dobson again, this guy Ed Dobson and Cal Thomas worked with uh, uh, Jerry Falwell to start up the uh, uh, the Moral Majority. Also later on, Cal Thomas and Ed Dobson wrote a book called uh, Blinded by the Right. Or is it blinded by the mind, one or the other? Which said, basically, we realized we were going about this the wrong way. You don't convert hearts by trying to change their politics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, anyhow, so this guy, he spent the last year trying to live as Jesus did. Uh, keeping a kosher diet, uh, not trimming the beard. That's why he's got this shaggy uh, beard uh, on him. Um, drinking beer. Going to bars and hanging around people there, and you know, among the sinners. Um, so uh, it was kind of an interesting experiment that he had for a year. I, I I really love that you know he's like giving up all this stuff. Although I'm I'm still wondering about the tassels on the clothing. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, he didn't mention anything about that, so I have a hunch that he kind of bent the rules on that one a little bit. Um, you know, because, let's say, Orthodox Jews, modern Orthodox Jews, do not follow the same set of rules as what would have been the rules in Jesus' day. So, um, and he did say that, you know, he bent a few things, like he would still go to his uh, grandkids' soccer games and, you know, stuff like that. But, um... I, I did. I, I really thought it was fascinating that he said, uh, it said, the normally teetotaling Dobson also allowed himself an occasional drink, noting Jesus was accused by critics of being a glutton and a drunkard who partied with pagans. So, it, you know, this is that whole, you know, what would Jesus do? <laughs> Jesus would have a drink once in a while. <laughs> oh, so I guess I got to do that too. <laughs> yep. That was um now, it, it, there was the, the one thing that I can't figure out, though, he said after living this this way, he said the, it, it brought him to vote for o, Barack Obama because he said, um, you know, he thought uh, being this community organizer would lead him to being more uh, what Jesus would be like, although he did admit that he disagreed with him on the topic of abortion. Um, oh, goody! And that's that's what I just kind of can't figure out because I just can't, um, you know. Uh, granted, I'm I'm more conservative. I'm, I'm conservative in my politics as it is, but uh, you know, I just um, if if you don't going to take care of people who are unborn that I'm not sure you're going to really take care of anybody else. Oh, very nice, Blaine. Because you've already made a decision that people are only useful, people are only valuable if they're really useful. Yeah, well, you know, it's that whole uh, how would Jesus vote, you know. And I I don't know that ultimately we could ever really answer that. Um, But I, you know, also being conservative, I, I tend to agree. Uh, with that, so people are welcome to disagree with us. Podcast at CrossFeedNews.com. 
So That's right. Well, yeah. on the other hand, I mean, that's not to say, by the way, that I think Republicans have it all together. No. no. I don't think they are God's no. party. <laughs> by no means. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, 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 I live in the, 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 the belief that no matter who's elected, um, they're going to disappoint you. And uh, that we always live in the world of the lesser two evils. It could be. I mean, he said he believed that, you know, Obama's spirit ultimately of the, of, was the lesser of two evils. You know, this, you know, it was closer. Um, and I continue arguing that, you know. Uh, I'm not sure I would agree with it, but, uh, you know, I can see either one being the lesser of two evils. I said in my sermon this morning that, um, you know, for about half the people in our country, they, um, they're really happy about the, uh, the election and half the people aren't real happy about it. And, uh, so, you know, for half the people, they think it's the end of the world and the other half think it's the second coming, <laughs> which by the way, the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, but I would, you know, argue, you know, that we have a, a good, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, so I thought that was an interesting comment from him that, you know, led him to vote for a Democrat for the first time. Uh, although I, okay, one, one more comment here. You see, actually, I've always thought Democrats would be the natural party to take care of the unborn because they're always talking about people who are defenseless. I think it's really, there's a lot I could actually vote for Democrats and I could actually agree with a lot of Democratic principles. Um, that you fight for those who can't fight for themselves and you fight for the powerless. And, uh, I agree with him. I think there's a lot of that in, in Jesus' thought. It's unfortunate they really don't live it out. But that's another story. <laughs> um, that's the one I can't figure out. The, how come that, they haven't figured that part. I thought it was interesting his, um, but going on to that, that the daily he would repeat, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Uh, that's very close to the Eastern Orthodox Jesus prayer, you know, uh, which is simply Jesus, have mercy on me. Um, Lord, and, 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 and of course the Kyrie. Um, and I know a lot of people who use the, 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 the Eastern Orthodox Jesus prayer daily and often. Yeah. It says he reread the four Gospels every week. He took to heart Jesus' commands to help the poor and visit the imprisoned. He also heeded his warning that only those who do God's work will enter heaven. That sort of didn't sit well with me. So when Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, um, and, you know, in different passages like that, that was all sort of with the understanding that, um, you know, what we're really talking about here, what is the work of God? What is, what is God's will for us? Faith. That's what he mm -hmm. wants for us. And this really, you know, and, and all right, this is a news story, um, out of, uh, the USA Today, which are, you know, hardly theologians and, um, you never know what they took out of context. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and I'll blame the USA Today on this one. Um, that, you know, those passages that talk about doing God's will, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not by visiting the sick and, and all that kind of stuff that gets us into heaven, you know? Um, that goes back to, yeah. Uh, well, the people said, what, what, uh, yeah, where we might we go to work the works of God? Here's the work of God to believe on the one whom He has sent. Uh, but gradually, uh, says Jesus is a very troubling individual, and I think what I, there, I think He found a very profound way by trying to live it out the law that no one can do what God. Hey, man, this don't feel right. My donkey senses are tingling all over. Hi, um, we had a glitch and, uh, this thing stopped recording and then we started recording and then it stopped recording and didn't realize it. We don't really have time to re-record the second half. It was really good. Um, unfortunately it's gone, um, because it didn't record properly. I think I accidentally hit the record button twice, um, which stopped it. So I apologize for that. Um, but anyway, uh, sorry and, uh. Thanks for tuning in, and we should have a full episode next week then. 
So, good night, everybody, and God bless. Good night. And blame Dale. <laughs> it's all his fault. But Jesus died for me, <laughs> so I'm forgiven. <laughs> At least by him. But it's still his fault. <laughs>